Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome the next president of the United States of America, Mr. Doug Stanhope. Thank you. That was Jessica Paquin and Norm Wilkerson. Thank you. The apathy is palpable here in Tyson's Corner, where apathy breeds. Khaki pants are ubiquitous. I know like nine big words, and I wear them like a paper helmet of fake intellect. <laughs> was Jessica funny or just hot? Because I thought she was funny, and I go, wait, is that maybe the just I want to fuck her part? <laughs> Making me think, is it a Sarah Silverman syndrome here? Because I think she's funny, but if she was a pig, would I maybe I'd find a flaw? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you don't know, if, sometimes I don't know if I'm a racist. You go, I'm not, but then you don't know. So, do, am I a sexist? I don't know. I want to fuck her, so maybe I'm giving her a good. I went to a McDonald's in Cincinnati. There's two parts of this story. There's the racism part, just because you're black guys and you're sitting in the front. I want to address my guilt. Uh, it was a, 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 one of those epiphany moments where I went into a, a McDonald's in Cincinnati, and it was the afternoon, and so I walk in, and it's empty, and there's a kid, he's a black kid behind the counter, and it's empty, so they're all the kids behind the counter are goofing around, and they're having fun, and this kid's, you know, smiling and happy, which you hate to see, but I mean, there was a moment where I go, oh, you know, because you have that moment where it's a black kid, and he's happy, and you have that trained moment of, Hey, you know, he's working at McDonald's. It's great. He, you know, he could be out on the streets and doing bad things, but he chose a... But if it was a white kid that was happy at McDonald's, I'd just go, what the fuck are you happy about? You're at McDonald's. I, so you, you think you're not a racist, but there's some kind of trained racism that you don't even recognize. But here's the rest of the story. This is what fucked with me on a human level, is they're all happy and they're joking. And the kid's got his visor, his McDonald's visor, and it's kind of askew, and he's wearing it sideways. And they're joking, and he sees me come up, and he goes, hey, can I help you? And out of his peripheral vision, he sees his manager come around the corner, and in a, like, a, 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 his face just went, oh, fuck. And he zipped his visor straight and forward, and he made eye contact with me, like, whoo! Like, we just beat the system. <laughs> and, you, and it was just, it was a very subtle moment, but it was one of those moments you go, fuck, you forget people live like this. Where beating the system means, oh, fuck, I gotta keep my hat straight. That was, like, that's his day. Like, what the fuck does that matter? You, people live, they, they take this shit so seriously. I hate it. I, there's something in your job that you do every day in your fucking stupid cubicle here. It's, I don't understand how this town works. It's just fucking glass and metal and fluorescent tubes and you all show up here so f fucking dead. Just lifeless, dead people staring at someone to make your life interesting. I don't know what you want. I mean, there's so many sweater vests that have shown up at my show over the last three shows, and I don't know what the fuck you want. Some of you are my crowd, and other people are just wayward fucking goats of the system. That It's Saturday, so, you know, after 60 hours, you got to pick something out of the weekend section and go to it. Oh, I, I want to set you all on fire. <laughs> We're taping for XM Radio tonight. So I'm going to mention XM Radio a lot, especially in my favorite bits, because if you mention their name, then they'll fucking play it a lot. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Yeah. 
I'm sick. Like fighting a fucking, trying to fight a flu with Jägermeister, and I think it's working. <laughs> and it makes perfect sense. You got a fucking virus. You want to disinfect something, you wipe it down with alcohol, right? Yeah. So far, I'm feeling better. <laughs> Fuck it. I drank quite a bit last night. You know how much? $97. That, that's how much I drank. I drink quite a bit every night because I am a drunk. <laughs> but I don't normally know how much I drink in a dollar amount because every other comedy club on the face of the planet would never charge a comic for alcohol. <laughs> Anywhere, ever. This club is different, so now I know how much I drank. $97 plus gratuity. I gratuitized well. <laughs> You're a, I'm a fucking alcohol salesman. That's what I do. You don't charge me. It's like if I was, I was a fucking Coke dealer. I'm the guy I'm fucking pimping it on the street, and I go to my supplier, and I go, you want to do a rail? Well, you know how, how much it costs? No. That's what I charge them, asshole. I know what you pay for it. That's what I'm doing for you. I'm selling alcohol. You don't give a fuck about comedy. The best Western is not here to promote the arts. They're here to sell fucking booze. And I'll tell you one thing. I don't toot my own horn a lot, but as far as being a drunk on stage, when it comes to being an alcohol salesman, I'm the Ricky Roma in this industry, cocksucker. <laughs> you want to sell alcohol, you give me a free supply, and I'll sell the fucking booze to the fucking poople heads. That's the Al Swearingen reference from Deadwood. Ooh, not a Deadwood fan in the house. <laughs> Awful. A drunk. With Deadwood. Deadwood. We're drunk now. Good. Get, get to be a more fun drunk. This crowd needs the guy with the lampshade. <laughs> right. Did you ever fake Parkinson's disease so you don't have to admit that you're a reckless alcoholic in the morning? That all that shaking is just congenital? Oh, no, I'm just nervous. No, you ain't nervous. You're a fucking rummy. Pour another fucking shot down your head, loser. <laughs> Fuck it. It's been a fun ride, but Jesus. I'm 38 years old now, and it gets to a point where you want to be a drunk and a fuck-up at 38. You're drinking alone a lot of the time because your friends, they're gone. They fucked off. You age, the bar stays 23 years old. You keep getting older, bar's always 23, and then you're the weird, creepy guy at the end of the bar watching the sports bloopers with no volume because you ain't got shit to say to the person next to you. You're 23. What, you're going to tell me about your fucking ringtone? I got 50 cents. I got, I got problems, Captain. I, and you're not a fucking guy I can talk to about it. Because I had friends when I started. I was 23 once, too, and there was a bunch of us getting fucked up. And one by one over the years, you dropped out, and you got sucked into the system, and you got sucked into that office building, and you started taking shit seriously. Uh, why? Well, what, 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 well, I can't drink with you on a Wednesday, man. Come on, man. Well, you can't leave me with these 23-year-olds. I'm sitting there paying $9 a fucking drink with no one to talk to. Come on now. Can't, man. <laughs> You used to when you were 26, you just had some shitty job and you didn't give a fuck about working hungover, but then they gave you a title and now you take yourself seriously. They moved you up $4 an hour and gave you a fucking white shirt instead of the blue Oxford and a fucking bigger name tag. And now you're going to, oh, I can't drink with you on a Wednesday, man. I got responsibilities. I'm the, I'm the manager of the factory now. I got responsibilities. No, faggot, you got the keys is what you got. You got, the, you got the keys to that closed factory. We could be drinking there. You're leaving me here with these kids. We could be drinking at the factory, drinking costco price beer, having forklift races. You weren't such a douchebag acting like you're important. What the fuck is that? 
Remember? You were the guy that used to fucking not give a shit if your visor was askew at McDonald's. Remember you? <laughs> now you're it's horrible. I know you get to pay a bill. We all get to pay bills, but you don't have to <coughs> suck a dick. Take a day off, man. Like, uh, <laughs> pay a bill. <laughs> you don't need that much shit. Hooker's a fucking great alternative. I, uh, I used to respect and adore hookers, and now I envy hookers. A great fuck. You know what? Especially in this town, look at that. You're, you're wearing the fucking uniform of the boring. You have the khaki pants and the blue Oxford that I make fun of. And it's too tight. You're uncomfortable in it. You get fucking caught up. All, the, 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 this area especially, you're so status-driven with your fucking titles. and it, it's, That's why Hooker is great, because you don't get... They don't get caught up in the status of it, right? Hooker doesn't get caught up. Hooker, entry-level Hooker, starts at the most she's ever worth. That's her best day is her first day on the job. That's when she's worth the most... And every day after that is years working her way down to eventually 525 an hour. Fucking <laughs> hooker looks at my job like a long day. If I was sucking dick, I'd be done by now. So take off your blue Oxford, suck a dick, work a half day Monday, give a fucking lunchtime hand job to some fucking queer senator and then go catch a doubleheader of the nationals <laughs> sorry i gotta talk to my sound guy over there every now and then he's the other xm radio guy sonny fox the guy that's actually gonna broadcast this on xm well he took shit seriously and he has to go home early <laughs> Yeah, I got responsibilities here at XM. <laughs>